<laughs> All right, welcome. Uh, my name is Jason Sears, and I am here to present uh, the Justice for Life Framework for Understanding the Human Condition. So getting right into it, uh, what this presentation is going to cover are these elements. Uh, there's uh, basically four key concepts, vision, errors, levels, and domains. So those are all one, two, three, and four. And then uh, 12 is going to be messages, which is a th synthesis of the first four. And then finally, uh, we're going to talk about how this applies to you, the viewer watching this video. So if all of this connects to you, then we'll have achieved something in crafting a framework. So let's start with what the heck we're talking about. This idea of the human condition. Uh, if you look up a definition on Wikipedia, you get this de definition of uh, um, all the characteristics and key events that compose the essentials of human existence, birth, growth, emotion, aspiration, conflict, and mortality. So this concept of human condition is often called in by philosophers to uh, describe one of the biggest challenges that we have as a human civilization, which is how, how to figure out how to live in peace and to live sustainably and, and live in a way that uh, every benefits everybody. The human condition, this is something that we're going to come back to, but this is uh, at the very foundation of this framework, and you'll see elements of this concept throughout the whole presentation. But um, what, what we've got here are the juxtaposition of, of two kind of uh, two sides to a coin, uh, and maybe some kind of like continuum or path between the two. And on one we've got uh, survival, and on the other side we've got this concept of consciousness. And in a, in a strange way, these concepts really form the inner conflict that we have as individuals and as a society. So let's get into what, what we're talking about with all this. So first we're going to start with the vision. Every framework, every, every human enterprise has some kind of vision, some kind of organizing principle. And so this one is this concept of injustice and stability or peace, world peace. You could call it world peace. You could call it harmony. You could call it coexistence, unity in, in and in togetherness that is at the complete opposite end of this problem that we've got of injustice. And, and you know, that looks like war. It looks like um, uh, oppression. It looks like loneliness and suicide, it looks like uh, animal oppression, it looks like poverty, it looks like environmental devastation. All of these things are aspects of injustice and, and when almost anyone looks at these elements of society, they will agree that they're not wanted. They're not a wanted aspect of our existence and yet, and yet they're there. So this movement away from it, movement towards something better, something uh, a little more stable, um, sustainable long term um, is something that a lot of religions and philosophies are, are trying to espouse and they're trying to articulate um, and trying to move in, the, in this direction. So this is a vector and a vector is a mathematical concept to describe a position, a, an orientation and a, and a direction and a, and a movement really. So this vector is, is on one end of it is injustice and on the other end of it is is some kind of movement away from that injustice. So that's one. At the, at the foundation of this framework is an intentionality to move away from injustice and toward stability. Two, uh, now we're going to get into the two errors, the two errors that uh, are fundamental to why we even have this injustice and, and also understanding those errors, how, how we're going to move away from that. So uh, before we get to the errors, I want to cover this concept of yin and yang, because as you can imagine, this idea of duality, um, two-ness, uh, it's very common in philosophy and it's something that is discussed in religions in terms of good and evil and um, in, in Christian religions in terms of good and evil. And in Eastern religions, there's this concept of yin and yang, which is, I think, a little more of a robust and uh, deep understanding of these concepts, not making them, uh, you know, good and bad means that one of them is good and one of them is not good. And, and rather, yin and yang kind of looks at this as, as uh, how, how these two forces give rise to each other, that they are, they are both unique and, that, and yet they only exist because the other exists. So... Um, this, that's the concept of dualism, opposite contrary forces, seemingly contrary forces, uh, but may actually be complementary. And this is a big part of Eastern religion is, is respecting this idea of, of duality, that it's, it's important, that it needs to exist. 
Um, and, and this concept of interconnected and interdependent world, doesn't that sound awesome? Like that, that really represents kind of the, the way we're going toward. Um, and, uh, and how we give rise to each other is, is really an understanding of what are these forces? What is it that, that constitutes the yin and the yang? So let's elaborate a little bit more on this. And uh, when we look at yin, which is the dark side of the Tai Chi symbol, the yin it represents the inside. It represents the hidden, uh, the reactive. Um, we can almost think of the yin as as the uh, as, as a survival, as as part of our our animal natures that that um, you know we are we are comprised of all of the things needed in order to to continue living and. Um, so the inside is, is a look inward, and that's a perspective almost, an inward look. And you contrast that with the yang, and that's the outside. So that's the outside world. That's what world uh, you're operating with as an individual. And you know, that's the openness. It's activating. It's, um, it's burning hot and you know, changing the world and changing your environment and using the tools that you've got for survival in other ways. So yin and yang um, are, are these really, this is how it's been represented in the past, but I haven't found these to be too applicable to daily life in terms of the, our challenges with conflict. So I have a different formulation of this exact same concept, and that is these, and, and it comes from a scientific worldview uh, of, of um, errors. So in, in any kind of scientific analysis of data, uh, when we're looking at a distribution curve, usually, uh, and a distribution curve represents a lot of different data input, inputs on a scale. And um, what, we, what we notice in these distribution curves is that um, errors exist. And there are really two types of errors that can happen, and these are things that scientists are always being mindful of because these errors represent kind of our, our human uh, uh, tendencies to see things that, you know, not as the way they really are. So first we got this type one error, and essentially this, this means that you have uh, thought that there is a problem that exists, and your assumption, your, your theory is that there is a big problem, and in reality that problem is not real or is not as bad as what you think it is. And so this type one error, um, I'm formulating this as an overreaction to problems, and, um, and this is caught, the, the, the problems that you're overreacting to are maybe causing tolerable harm. So it's a problem, it's something that needs to be addressed, but it's toler tolerable in the moment, so the reaction needs to be mediated in that, in that sense. So um, there's a story of, of Chicken Little and, and the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Um, and you know, the first time he goes around to the, to the town saying the sky is falling, everyone comes out and is worried and looking up and they don't see anything happening and, and so they dismiss it. And the next time he comes around yelling the sky is falling, you know, everyone comes out, nothing's happening, they're getting annoyed with, with Chicken Little. And then the third time he comes around saying the sky is falling, the sky is falling, no one uh, uh, pays attention to him, everyone ignores him. And of course, that's the time when something really bad is happening. And um, so the story here is that uh, it does, it's not helpful. If you identify a problem, it's not helpful to overreact to that problem in terms of how we're interacting with other people and how we're working together in order to collaborate on that. So it's, a, it's an expansion from your individual perspective of, of sensing a problem and then moving out of that and how we go about addressing that problem in humanity. So that's the yin side of this, is the inside. This is the... This is the, the core, the, the self, looking at the self, looking at how we feel and how, how things have affected us. So now we go on the other side of that, the yang side, and this is the outside. This is the hot, burning hot side. Um, and so this is where our type two errors come on. Now a type two error is a whole different thing that happens, and that is when you uh, think that there is no problem. When you have your, your theory and your framework has, has assessed there's no problem in this, in this area when in fact there is a problem that needs to be addressed. So a type two problem is you think there's no problem, but there really is a problem. So uh, this is this whole, this is a much more complex formulation because uh, I'm using an example here of you're overreacting. So you think of a, of a couple who's in a fight and someone is, is overreacting to something. Well, the reaction to that often is you're overreacting and that is a way of ignoring a problem, not acknowledging the feelings that are being expressed or the potential of, of a real problem that needs to be addressed. So um, we ignore problems that are causing intolerable harm. So that's the d distinction is that we ignore problems a lot and you think about this in a survival sense that if we get hurt, you know, we get a laceration on our, on our leg 
uh, we're not just going to lay there and die. We're going to get up and we're going to you know, keep doing what we need to do and try and deal with that when we can, but we not, might need to ignore it at, at that moment. Um, so from a survival perspective, this makes sense that we might, we might want to ignore some problems sometimes just so that we can get, get to the next thing or get to a safer place. However, when we're ignoring problems that are causing harm, that are causing harm, that are holding people back, um, that's a major problem. Like, and, that, and that's something that we see in society today. Racial justice and the problem with systematic racism, where uh, people who have, who have black skin experience something different when they're interacting with law enforcement and interacting with a lot of the systems that, that we use in society. So if you are not black skinned, you're probably not as aware of that problem. But so when you're brought awareness to it, it's very natural to, to ignore it and to want to ignore it and say, oh, let's dismiss it and say that's not, you know, that's not a, 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 that big of a deal. So we cannot ignore problems that are really affecting people. So these are the two problems. They come from this yin and yang, the inside and the outside. They're aspects of our consciousness. And there's more about the, uh, the development of, of this formulation. Uh, but for now, we're going to keep moving on with the, with the framework. So we've hit the vision, that vector of injustice. We've talked about the two errors that create injustice, the overreacting to problems and the ignoring of problems. And now we're going to go into the three levels. Uh, we've got three levels of depth. So as we are talking about these very complex issues in society, that we're talking about social problems, economic problems, political problems, ecological problems, very overwhelming. One thing we can all agree on is that there's levels of, of communicating with this. So we, we start at an emotional level. This is where our biases, our emotions, our behaviors, it's, this is the awareness, awareness level. Um, and so this is the level at which we're operating almost on a daily basis and when we're interacting with other people and we're sensitive to how people are feeling, we're sensitive to our own feelings, we are triggered by things, we, we have, sometimes we don't have feelings when we want to have feelings. This is all, all at this uh, awareness level. We take it up one level and now we have this level of understanding. So this is the analysis that happens as we're thinking, we're being thoughtful about our own lives, the things that have happened in the past, we're making predictions about what might happen in the future. So what we're trying to do here is develop systems, resources, judgment. This is all about organizing information so that it makes sense. So we're taking everything that happened in, in the emotional level, we're analyzing it, we're understanding it. So that's the second level is understanding. Now, understanding is useless in and of itself. It needs to be applied to your life. And that's why we have this uh, third level, which is lifestyle. And that's where we have philosophy, religions, and morals. And you can see now how we're getting into a whole different level here, a whole different derivative, really, of, of where we started. And here we are actually inferring that based on our understanding of what we've observed, we ought to behave in a certain way. So this is dangerous territory here because uh, we are all going to be resistant to other people's ideas of how we ought to live. What's important is that we develop our own sense, our own sense of what's right and how we ought to live. And that is the lifestyle level that we have to, we have to move ourselves in there. So that's pretty simple, but this, this is part of the framework. Um, and you can see how it would be important to try and get everybody who's trying to work on problems to, to use all of these levels. They all have value. They all, have, they all are important. Because they're all important, there is a, a, a movement between them. So it's not a matter of moving up and then being done. Um, we're constantly returning and, and going back. We're going back and forth, up and down these stairs, as it were, here in this, in this visualization. Um, uh, even as, as we are living a lifestyle, living a certain religion, um, we're not necessarily holding that in our minds every moment of the day. We're often down here at the awareness level. So we need to acknowledge that we're always moving around in this. So this is an important part of the framework. All right, so we've got the vision, uh, the vector away from injustice, toward justice, toward sustainability. Uh, we've got the two errors, type one and type two errors, overreacting and ignoring problems. We've got these three levels of depth in which we're communicating. This is a lot of information. So now this is the last element, key element of the framework are the four domains. Let's start by returning to this idea of the human condition. And remember over here we had survival and over here we had consciousness. And these are two very broad concepts. But we can agree that over on this side of survival exists you. You matter, you deserve to survive, and everything that happens in life in terms of, of how people are interacting with you needs to respect this, this right to survive. So we start here, 
And we all start here as children, as we're, as we're learning and growing and seeing the world. You know, we want to eat, we want to move, we want to do things that help us uh, grow and survive. So when we move out from that, uh, we, we, ne the next kind of level we see is resources. So uh, we notice that there are things around us, there's objects that we can learn about, that we can hold on to, that we can use. Um, this is where food comes in and uh, we're aware of different kinds of food and, and, and ability to consume. Um, so money and all these things are an aspect of, of what we as individuals have created. And now uh, the next kind of derivative really is, is to move out from resources to look at humanity as a whole. And that all of these resources were not created by you, they were created by other humans. And so we as a collective are, are, have created these resources. And so it's important that we understand our relationship to the collective and, we, and how, how we contribute to and get benefit from humanity, all of humanity. So if we agree that there's some kind of expansion of, of purpose here, that you start with a purpose of you, you, you expand out to seeing purpose and getting resources and having, having security there, and then you see purpose in contributing to humanity, being a part of a larger, you know, this is the leave the world a better place kind of concept. We can see that there's, there's an inevitable direction this is going that, that goes beyond humanity. And that's, I, I put here universe, but often we look at our, our whole planet as a, a, a whole ecosystem, as all of life, um, which is pretty much the limit of what we can understand in our own, uh, in our own like, you know, lens. So the universe is something that we would uh, appreciate and see purpose in as we expand, expand this concept. So, this is actually a derivative, this is the formulation of what I really want to share with you, which are the four domains. So here are the four domains. And just like the levels, it's important to realize that all of these are valuable. They all have value and uh, we're going to move between them and try and balance all of them and not respect or, or, or hold up any one of them as more important than the others. So we have individuality, we have wisdom, we have community, and we have change. So these are the four domains. Um, you could also think of them as four perspectives. You could even see uh, individuality and wisdom as being uh, the yin and the yang, two sides of the yin and the yang. Uh, you can see wisdom as being information and, and as being resources and things we create, um, all the things that are created in the world. And you can see change as being the ability for you to change as an individual, because you do change in your life. You've changed since you were a child, and you'll change throughout your whole adult life. And you can see change as something that's happening to societies, as we have had different kinds of civilizations over time. And you can see change as universal. We're going back 14 trillion years to the beginning of what we can, can conceptualize uh, as, as our universe. And uh, we can look at uh, 4.6 billion years of, our, of, our, of life on Earth and um, all the change that's happened since then. And you can also think about the change in the future and kind of the direction that we want things to go. So these are all important domains, different perspectives uh, from which to look at our problems as humanity. And that's why it's an important part of the framework. Whew, that was a lot. That was a ton. So we just covered the four key elements of the framework. Um, so in the framework I'm about to show you, which is 12 messages, you're going to see all of these four. So let's see if you can detect them all in there. So here's the framework. So we're starting down here with core problem. And, uh, and the words here, the insecurity and forgiveness, uh, is gonna, this, this represents the yin and the yang of this intersection of individuality and the awareness level of the depth. So we've got our three depths here, awareness, understanding, lifestyle. We've got our four domains, uh, individuality, wisdom, community, and change. We've got a direction. So these are, these are actually, um, it's a direction. You travel this way and you go through here and you go that way and you come up here. So there's 12 messages. You can number them because they, they form a path. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, so now you see that uh, there's, there's this directionality to it. So that's the moving away from injustice towards justice. And then you're probably wondering, where is the duality in this? Where's the yin and the yang symbol? And that is in each one of these intersections. So at each intersection, we're going to study the yin and the yang and the, uh, the type 1 and type 2 problems that are unique to that intersection. 
So insecurity and forgiveness is the is the uh, the type one and the type two problems of our uh, intersection of individuality and awareness. So uh, let's hold on to that for a second because now that we've traveled through the whole formulation, I've I've talked about the different levels of the framework. I've showed you the overall framework, which is a lot to digest. So now let's just dig in really quick to see if this applies to you as a person, you as an individual. So here we go. We're going to, first of all, we're going to start with the first message. There's 12 messages as part of this framework. The first message is the intersection of individuality and awareness. So awareness, remember, is the biases and the emotions. And the individuality has to do with ourself, the inward looking at yourself. So that's where we're existing right now. So let's start by realizing that there is a, a, a progression here. Remember, we're trying to go away from injustice and towards justice. So that exists in this, um, in this model. So we're going to have, think of this as like a path that you might, uh, a hill that you'll climb, a path that you'll travel. Um, you could also think of it as a distribution curve of different people in different places or places that you've been in your life. So there's movement in this direction. So where are we moving away from and where are we going to? Well, where we're coming from is this uh, insecurity. So the very concept of, of survival is that we, uh, there's a lot of threats around us. There's, uh, we're surrounded by threats and there's always an opportunity to, to die or to be wounded in a way that, that would threaten our survival. So insecurity captures the emotional state of feeling like your survival is being threatened. So insecurity, and the quote here is, I've been hurt. You know, anytime you've been hurt, you're going to feel insecure. A lot of times we'll even anticipate things that we're about to do. Like if you're about to go speak on stage, you'll feel a fear. You'll feel an insecurity in that moment um, because uh, of, of a survival instinct that is telling you that if you're rejected by your community, that that's going to hurt your ability to exist within that community. So it, you can look at it from an evolutionary lens here, but... Um, so what we're moving away from is this insecurity because we don't want people to be insecure. Now, where are we moving to? Just like the yin and the yang, the type one and the type two problems, remember they're totally different formulations or different reasons, even though they feed off each other, they, they exist for totally different reasons. So over here we have, we have we survive. So we have a broadening of survival from, it's not just about you, it's about us, a collective. It's about maybe it's your family, um, maybe it's your community, or your city where you live, or maybe you see it as all of humanity. Um, so we survive together. So forgiveness is a very complex concept that comes out of this formulation um, that starts with the idea that you have learned something. You learn something from your pain and um, letting go of the attachment to other people to blame other people for that pain and rather to forgive them, to forgive yourself to start with for having the feelings um, because that's a normal part of being a human being is feeling insecure, very, very normal. So you forgive yourself from from uh, uh, having that feeling, helps you move forward. You're, you're learning something. So you're probably wondering, how the heck do I do that? How do you forgive when you're having a hard time forgiving? And that's where the framework comes in to help you understand. So now we've got the three levels of understanding. So we start down here at the emotional level. This is, you know, if you're about ready to get on that stage to speak, you're gonna feel fear. So that's your feeling is fear. So now what you're gonna do is move, to move forward, you need to move up this path. You're gonna move up to the understanding level. And that's where you think about what's going on. You process your emotions. You, you're thinking, okay, is there anything bad happened to me? No. Am I ready to make this presentation? Yeah, okay. And then the third level there is lifestyle is that at some point you're gonna realize that, that this is an experience you're gonna have throughout your life. You're gonna have different times when you're speaking. You're gonna have, you know, this is gonna return in different ways. So it's important that you master this and you continue to do this every single time. So the lifestyle you know, part that, that gets you up there to the side, to the to the top, and then you can come down the other side of forgiveness. Um, you know, so let's talk about how we how we do this movement through through all three sides. So I'm going to split this up into four chunks, and then these four chunks are now you're going to see these four domains are coming back in. So now we've got the individuality domain. This is where we started with our feeling of insecurity. Now we've got, as we move forward, move up this line here, we move into the understanding level of awareness. And, um, and this is where we are using our tools like breathing and uh, breathing exercises and get, calming ourselves down, calming our own emotional state. And then we move into the community side of this distribution here, this pathway, where once you get on the other side and you've calmed down, you realize 
that everybody feels these things. Everybody has these same kinds of, of insecurities and fears in public speaking. And everybody in the audience is aware of that. And, and they want you to succeed. They're there to listen to you. They want, they're, if anything, they're going to be clapping for you. They're going to be encouraging for you. Um, so there is a, a community side of this that helps you continue to move forward, continue to get, get out of this insecurity by relying on other people and relying on your community and getting support from them. So your community is what helps you move forward. And then finally, um, when we're coming back down the other side here, we're going back down to the awareness level. And this is where we get into the idea of change, is that you have that moment. You're going to take steps out onto the stage. You'll do it with a big smile, do it with a nice calm body, and you're going to have an experience that's going to change your life forever. So you're going to change. And it all was because you forgave yourself for having those feelings to begin with. You didn't get caught up on it. You didn't get stuck on it. Um, you, 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 lived, you worked through it, and you moved forward despite, despite it existing. So, so that's how you do it. Insecurity to forgiveness. And there's a lot to say about forgiveness. And everything that we can say about forgiveness, I think, can be captured in this single formulation here. Um, the idea of forgiveness is letting go of your own feelings, your own internal feelings and attachments towards something that's happened to you, either another person or an event that's occurred. Um, it doesn't mean that, that other people are not going to be accountable for the harm that they've caused. It doesn't mean that you're going to allow someone to continue hurting you if you forgive them. That it has nothing to do with that. Forgiveness is about you, and it's about you not blaming other people or needing other people to do anything. You're going to be able to move forward in your life regardless of having been hurt by other people because you've learned something. And so you can forgive someone and put boundaries up uh, uh, between you and them so that they don't hurt you. Um, so all of this is captured in this model, and uh, this is just one of 12 messages. So uh, if you want to learn more about the Justice for Life framework and you want to see the other 12 formulations, um, I'd be happy to provide that for you. And this is a, a pilot uh, recording of this concept, so at this point in time, I do have everything that I could provide you, so I guess if you reached out and asked for it, I would provide it to you. But um, I don't have recordings of the other 12 messages yet. I like this framework. What do you think? <laughs>